Hello, I'm Sarah, here with Erica, and we're from City of Tucson Environmental Services. Hi everyone. We're here to talk about trash today. Who threw something in the trash today? Who recycled something today? Great. First, we want you to know that the City of Tucson is serious about following the guidelines for social distancing. While you may think Sarah and I are close together, we're actually far apart in separate locations. We hope you're staying safe at home. Remember to wash your hands often. If you're tired of singing the happy birthday song, sing your favorite song for at least 20 seconds while you're washing up. We know you miss being at school and we miss hanging out with you. So let's spend some time together to learn about recycling. Back to you, Sarah. Thanks. It's time to talk about trash. But think about that for a minute. What is trash in the first place? Do you know, Erica? I sure do. Trash is something we've used and are finished with. Trash is something we don't need anymore, so we throw it away. What's the plan for today, Sarah? We're going to learn the science behind where things come from and where they go when we throw them away. We'll consider some things we can do instead of just throwing things away, and we're going to do that with some fun games and activities. And we'll even have an adventure inside a recycling bin. Ready to get started? Okay. Do you see the two empty display boards by Erica? Well, we're about to fill them up with information so we can learn about where things come from. That's called the source. Can you say source? Source. Great. We'll also learn about the process of how things have made. Can you say process? Process. Nice. The things that are made that we use are called products. Can you say products? Product. Well done. Sarah, let's meet some of friends from the trash. Okay. First, I'd like to introduce you to Paige Paper. Can you all say hi, Paige? Hi, Paige. Great. Have any of you used page paper recently? How? Also, look around the room you're in. Do you see anything made of paper? Erica, how have you used paper today? Well, let's see. I read the newspaper this morning, and then I made a birthday card for my grandma. Oh, and I had, I had to use some tissues, and I have to admit, toilet paper too. All of us use toilet paper. Let me put page paper on our board here beneath the product label. Hmm, I wonder where paper comes from. What is the source of paper? Good answers. Erica, do you know? Yes, paper comes from trees. Have any of you seen big trees like this in a forest? Maybe you've been to Mount Lemon or the White Mountains. Let me put trees on the display board as our source. But how does paper come from trees? Do we just go into the forest and pick paper off the trees? No. Sarah, can you explain? It takes many years to grow a big tree, which is then cut down and turned into pulp. Then the pulp is rolled and pressed, and the final product is page paper. Erica, please add that to our display board. So, we need trees as our source, and those trees are then processed to make page paper. But when you're done using paper products, what do many people do with them? They throw them away. More on that later. Next product, Gabby Glass. Can everyone say, hello, Gabby? Hello, Gabby. Well done. How have you used Gabby Glass recently? Well, I drank from a glass of water at breakfast this morning, and I opened a jar of pickles to take in my lunch today. Let me put Gabby Glass on our board here beneath the product label. Great. So where does glass come from? What is Gabby made from? Oh, 
I bet you know because you play Minecraft. <laughs> Erica, tell us. You got it. Glass is made from sand. If you've been to the beach or sand dunes, you know all about these tiny grains. Let me place sand on the board now. Do you know how sand is turned into glass? Do we just find glass bottles forming along the beach? Of course not. Tell us, Sarah. We need to heat up lots of sand until it melts, and then we can pour it into molds to make Gabby glass. Time to add that process to our board. So, we need sand as our source, which is then processed to make Gabby glass. But when you're done using glass products, what do many people do with them? They throw them away. Now, let's meet Miguel Metal. Can you all say, hola Miguel? Hola Miguel. Have any of you used Miguel Metal today? How? Also, Look around the room you're in. Do you see anything made of metal? Erica, how have you used metal today? Well, I used a spoon at breakfast to eat my cereal. I drove here in a car and my easel is metal too. Let me put Miguel metal on our board here beneath the product label. Hmm, I wonder where metal comes from. Good answers. Help us out, Erica. Rocks. Rocks are made of minerals. Some minerals form deposits of metal called ore. Next time you're outside, look carefully at a rock to see the minerals it's made of. Okay, let's put these rocks up on our board. All right, but how does this happen? Do cans just form in pieces of rock? No. Sarah, can you explain? There's a specific process we must go through to create metal from ore. It takes millions of years for ore to form deep within the earth. We need to dig rocks up and separate the ore from the rock, then melt it into molten metal and finally form it into sheets or molds and voila, Miguel metal is made. And up on the board for that process, Erica. So, we need rocks as our source, which is then processed to make Miguel metal. But when you're done using metal products, what do many people do with them? They throw them away. And last but not least, this is peat plastic. Can you all say, howdy Pete? Howdy Pete. Kids, how have you used peat plastic recently? How about you, Erica? Hmm. Well, when I showered this morning, my shampoo bottle was made of plastic. And I had some orange juice at breakfast that was in a plastic bottle. And I drank from my reusable plastic water bottle. Peat plastic is a product. So I'm going to put him on the board here. So, where does plastic come from? Do you know? Erica? Plastic is made from oil, so oil is the source. We call oil from the ground petroleum. Let me add this to our board. But how does oil become plastic? Well, it takes millions of years for oil to form deep within the earth. We need to pump it up form it into plastic pellets, then melt them and pour the molten liquid into molds to make our product, peat plastic. So, we need oil or petroleum as our source, which is then processed to make peat plastic. But when you're done using plastic products, what do many people do with them? They throw them away. Wow, look at our display boards. We can easily see how we start with a source, which has to be processed to become a product. Our four, pro our four product friends come from trees, sand, 
rocks, and oil. Do you notice anything in common about where all four items came from? What do you think, Sarah? They all come from nature, the earth. Do you know what we call things that we use from the earth? I think some of you know. We call them natural resources. Can you say natural resources? Natural resources. Great. Everything we use in our lives comes from natural resources. Look around your room. What do you see? A computer made from glass, metal, and plastic, all from the earth. Books made from trees, which come from the earth. Your cotton t-shirt from a plant, which comes from the earth. Is there anything in your room that doesn't originally come from nature? No. Everything is made from natural resources. Some natural resources can be regrown or replenished. Can you think of any examples? Yeah, things like trees, water, and air. As long as we continue to take care of those natural resources, we'll have more. We call these renewable natural resources because they can be made or grown new as long as we're responsible with our use and care of them. Can you say renewable? Renewable. Great. Other items such as rocks and oil are non-renewable. Can you say non-renewable? Non-renewable. Nice job. They take a very long time to form and once used, they're gone forever. We'll talk more about what it means to be renewable and non-renewable later in the presentation. But for now, we can see that these four sources, trees, sand, rocks, and oil are very important. If you're just joining in, I'm Sarah from City of Tucson Environmental Services. I'm here with my coworker, Erica, and we're presenting Too Good to Throw Away. Because you're not in school, we're joining you safely at home. We're so glad you're learning about recycling with us today. Because everything we use comes from the earth, Let's take a look at what can happen to our natural resources as we need to make more products. Here's the earth again, and all of these stickers represent natural resources, like trees, sand, rocks, and oil. Let's play a game called Imagine That. You're going to imagine you're all grown up and you're applying for a new job. Ready for round one? Great. Congratulations! You just got a job working for a company that makes paper for library books. Imagine that! What natural resource do you need from the earth? That's right! Trees! Very good! Can you all stand up at home in front of your computer or tablet and imagine that you're a tree? Nice! Can you make another tree pose? Great job, very tree-like. But now I need to cut down some trees to make paper. So I'm gonna remove some of the tree stickers from the earth. Okay, time for round two. Double thumbs up. You were just hired at a plastics company that makes reusable water bottles. Imagine that. What natural resource do you need from the earth to make a plastic bottle? Correct! Oil! So, let's imagine that you're drilling into the ground. Spin around like a drill and make some drilling sounds to pump up the oil. Well done! You guys are good drillers. Time to pump up some of that oil and remove some of our oil stickers from our earth. Okay, round three. Good news, you just got a job at a company that makes glass jars. Imagine that. What's the natural resource needed to make glass? That's right, sand. Imagine that you're digging up lots of sand like this. Great. 
Great shoveling. Whew. Okay, I need to dig up some sand from our earth. So let's remove some sand stickers. Last round. Air five, everyone. You've been hired at a company that makes cell phones. Imagine that. Do you know what cell phones are made of? That's right. Several things, including glass, plastic, and metal. So time to get busy. Start shoveling again to get that sand. Then spin around like a drill to get that oil. And let's see, let's scoop up the rocks and crush them to mine the metal we need. Excellent work. Whew. Go ahead and sit back down. Now I need to mine some sand, oil, and metal stickers from the earth. Uh-oh, now that we've used so many of our natural resources for things we need that are made of paper, glass, metal, and plastic, let's look at the natural resources on our earth ball. Do you notice a difference? Not many are left. We use them to make all kinds of products. But every time we use a product, we need more. Each time we use something, we're using natural resources from the earth. We must cut down more trees to grow more paper, dig more sand to make glass, mine more rocks for metals, or pump up and process more oil to make plastic. But is there an endless supply of natural resources? No. Tell us more, Erica. How many of you have a piggy bank at home? Or even a real bank account? The earth is a lot like a bank, isn't it? If you don't save your money and you keep taking money out of the bank, what will happen to the amount of money in your bank? Yeah, you'll run out of it. We don't want that to happen, do we? And we certainly don't want that to happen to the natural resources we have here on earth. Let's look at natural resources in a little more detail. Remember earlier when we talked about the two types of natural resources? What were they? Right. Renewable and non-renewable. But remember, even though renewable natural resources replenish themselves, it can take a very long time. If we cut down trees to make paper, we need to plant more trees. And a tree doesn't grow overnight. It takes many years. Let's grow some more trees by putting our tree stickers back on the earth. Scientists used to say that sand is also a renewable resource because rocks are continually being weathered and eroded. But we're mining so much sand for building and road construction that we're using it up faster than it can be formed because it takes a long time to break rocks down into sand. So I can only put one sand sticker back on the earth. What about our non-renewable resources like oil and rocks? Oil is a fossil fuel. It was formed in the earth from fossilized plants and animals that lived on earth approximately 100 million years ago. That's a long time ago. Can you see now why we can't put any oil and rocks back on our earth ball? They take a really long time to form. So whenever we throw something away, we've essentially taken something from the earth, processed it and turned it into something else and then when we're finished with it, what do we do? We throw it away. But is there such thing as away? What do you think, Sarah? That's right, there is no away. The stuff we throw away has to go somewhere. How many of you throw your garbage out in your yard? Of course not. Can you imagine if everything you threw away went in a big pile in your yard? It would be a big, giant, messy, and probably stinky mountain. Fortunately, our community has a system to take care of our garbage. Have any of you ever seen the garbage trucks that come to your house to pick up your garbage? Where do those trucks take your garbage? Do you know, Erica? Here in Tucson, everything that we put in the trash goes to the Los Reales landfill. A landfill is a very large area of land set aside specifically for burying trash. How big is our landfill, Sarah? The Los Reales landfill covers 
50 acres. How big is that? Close your eyes for a minute and imagine a football field. It's very large, isn't it? Now imagine 270 football fields put together. Wow, that's the size of the Los Reales landfill. Okay, open your eyes and take a good look at the landfill. What do you see? Do you see any of our four friends buried in the landfill? Yeah, I see Paige, Gabby, Miguel, and Pete are all buried among the trash in our landfill. Do you know that almost half the things in the landfill don't need to be there? As a result, we're wasting space in the desert and we're wasting natural resources. Almost all communities have a landfill where their garbage is buried. We usually build landfills outside of town and often in nice desert or other natural areas. Landfills require lots and lots of space. First, we have to clear all the desert plants, but what happens to the animals that live there after the land has been cleared? That's right, they lose their habitat. Next, we dig a big hole in the ground. Then the ground is covered with special liners to help prevent water pollution. Next, the hole is filled with garbage and layered with dirt. So here in Tucson, garbage trucks pick up trash from schools and apartments and homes and businesses and bring it to the Los Reales landfill. Bulldovers pile dirt over everything. You can imagine that's a pretty big hole taking up quite a bit of space. Each day, Tucson buries about 1,500 tons of garbage in the landfill. As you can imagine, the landfill is filling up fast. When will a landfill fill up? Do you know, Sarah? In about 60 years. Then what? We'll have to build a new one. We'll have to find more land to clear and turn into a landfill, using up more natural resources. In this case, the natural resources are the land needed for the landfill and all the plants and animals that live there. We're using up natural resources just to make space for garbage. And think about this. Every year in the United States, we generate 250 million tons of garbage. That's enough trash to cover the state of Arizona five times. So think about this. Does it make any sense to use something once and just throw it away? Does it make sense to go through all the effort and cost to cut down a tree or mine the earth and process the natural resources into a product just to be used one time and then throw it away to be buried in a landfill and never be seen or used again? So what can we do? Can we rethink this? Of course we can. Okay, everyone. Can you make a big L with your arms like this? The L is for the Los Reales landfill. But we don't want so much waste going to our landfill. So let's use our heads and rethink it. Let's do that again. Make an L for the landfill. But do we want to waste our natural resources in the landfill? Or do we rethink it and try something else? Great job. So let's look at what we can do to help us save our natural resources. Have you heard of the three R's? Reduce, reuse, recycle? Let's say them out loud together and count with our fingers. Reduce, reuse, Recycle. And one more time. Reduce, reuse, recycle. The first R is reduce. What does it mean when we reduce something? That's right, reduce means to make something smaller. To reduce the amount of garbage we produced, we can use less of a material or product to begin with. Let's play a game called What's in the Bag? Have you ever played that mystery game where you put your hand inside a bag and you have to guess what item is inside? Let's try that now. Erica will describe what she's feeling and let's see if you can guess what the item is. 
if you think you know what the item is, you can shout out, I know what's in the bag. And because this bag is labeled reduce, I'm gonna guess that the items inside have to do with how we, to reduce the amount of trash we make. Okay, so the first item I'm feeling is hard and feels like plastic. It's square in shape and it feels like it has a lid. Oh, I think I know what it is. I'll give you a hint. You can put food in it. Do you know, kids? Sarah, how about you? Yes, yes, I think I know what's in the bag. Is it a reusable container, like for your lunch? Yay, you're right. Instead of using plastic bags every day, get some reusable containers for your lunch when you go back to school. Maybe you can buy lunch items in bulk and put them in your containers that you can reuse every day, or even just a few days a week. Remember, there are usually about 180 days in a school year, so you can really reduce the amount of waste you make every day. Okay, feel another item in my bag. It's smooth and sort of round or cylindrical maybe, but the top has something that I can press, and it feels like it's made out of plastic. Any ideas? Oh, oh, I know what's in the bag. Is it a reusable water bottle? It is. Instead of buying disposable water bottles, why don't you buy a reusable water bottle that you can use over and over again, like the one Erica has? Just remember to rinse out your bottle and let it air dry at the end of each day. By using less packaging, we reduce the amount of waste we are creating. Also, we usually save money as well. All right, there's one more item in here. Feels sort of soft or squishy. Um, there's a zipper and some Velcro. Oh, and it has a handle too. What do you think it is? I know it. I know what's in the bag. Is it a reusable lunch bag? Yes. Again, when you go back to school, try using a reusable lunch bag instead of disposable paper bags to reduce your waste. Have you noticed that reduce is listed first in the three R's? Probably because it's the most important one. It does the most to help us save our natural resources. When we reduce, we keep waste from happening in the first place. Let's look at our second R now. All right, our second R is reuse. What does it mean to reuse something? Good, instead of throwing something out, we can use it again. Often we just use things once and then throw them away. But let's find ways we can use them again for another purpose. Let's look inside my reuse bag to learn more. Hmm, okay, this item feels like it's made out of plastic and it has a lid. It's sort of round, but it's, it is flat on the top and bottom. Oh, I know what's in the bag. Is it a plastic tub? Yes. Instead of throwing this plastic tub in the trash, let's see if you can think of three different things we could reuse it for. Great ideas. We could use it for leftovers, turn it into a piggy bank to hold our spare change, or store a little rock collection in it. Fantastic ideas. Time for the next item. Okay, it's made of soft cloth. It can feel some openings too. Oh, like a, like a sleeve. Can you kids guess? I think you might be right. I know it's in the bag. It must be an old t-shirt. Exactly. When you outgrow your clothes and they're still in good shape, you can give them to someone else to wear, like your younger brother or sister, or you can donate used clothing to a charity or sell it at a yard sale or a used clothing store. Okay, I think there's something else in the bag. Oh, this is a hard one. It's like a tube that I can sort of squish, but it's got something like rubber bands around it. Hmm, I'm stumped. Let's look at it. What is this? Oh, I know. It's a hairband holder. It's a creative way to reuse an old toilet paper tube and a scrap of gift wrap. It's easy to make and a great way to store your hairbands for those of us with long hair. That's a great idea. 
we can get really creative and reuse all kinds of things. Time for the third R, which is recycle. What does it mean to recycle? It means to take something old and make it into something new. When we make items from recycled material, we use less energy and fewer natural resources than making products from new material. It also cuts down on air and water pollution that occurs when we make products from raw material. Let's see how this works. Okay. I feel something flat and round and it's made out of plastic. I think I know what it is, but here's a hint. It's something you can play with outside. You can throw it to a friend or your dog and they can catch it. Oh, I know what's in the bag. Is it a Frisbee? You got it. This Frisbee is made of plastics that were melted down and reshaped into something usable again. Oh, here's an easy one. It's hard on the outside and more flexible on the inside. And it feels like there are lots of pieces of paper on the inside. Any ideas? I know what's in the bag. Is it some kind of book? You're good at this, Sarah. It's a notebook made from recycled paper. Okay, one more. Feels like a small rectangular cardboard box. And if I shake it, there's lots of things inside that move around. Mm, I think I know what's in the bag. Ah, uh, yes, a mac and cheese box. Do you guys like mac and cheese? Me too. Um, look carefully at the box and you'll discover that the cardboard was made from recycled paper products. No worries though, the macaroni hasn't been used before. <laughs> You're making me hungry, Erica. By the way, even the felt on our display boards is made completely from recycled plastic bottles. Wow! So Erica has been showing us products from her bags, but I think we forgot to talk about something that's really important because it lets us do all three R's at once. Do you know what it could be? Oh, of course, these bags. They're also made from recycled plastic bottles. By using a reusable bag, we reduce by not having to throw away disposable plastic or paper bags. We reuse by using it over and over again, and we recycle by having it made from plastic bottles. Great thinking, everyone. You really did rethink what we can do with our trash. Let's say those three R's together one more time. Reduce, reuse, recycle. And now we've added one more R word, rethink. If you're just joining in, I'm Sarah from City of Tucson Environmental Services. I'm here with my coworker, Erica, and we're presenting Too Good to Throw Away. Because you're not in school, we're joining you safely at home. We're so glad you're learning about recycling with us today. Remember our natural resource friends? Here they are. Page Paper, Gabby Glass, Miguel Metal, and Pete Plastic? Well, let's take a step back in time. Instead of putting these products in the trash when we're finished with them, let's recycle them instead. Raise your hand if you recycle at home. Great, do you have a blue barrel at home? If not, you can take your recycling to any of the neighborhood recycling drop-off sites located around Tucson. Now raise your hand if you take your recyclables to a neighborhood recycling center. Looks like some of you do, great. Even if you don't have a blue barrel at home, you can still recycle. And when you're at school, do you recycle? Good job. Let's find out where the recycled items go. When the items in our blue barrels are picked up by the collection truck, they're taken to a materials recovery facility, more easily called a MRF, which rhymes with Smurf. Can you show us a picture, Erica? Sure, here you can see Tucson's MRF. Can you see the letters M-R-F? At the MRF, 
The items are sorted by machines and by hand so they can be separated into different groups. The newspapers, cans, jars, and bottles are put into big bundles with other similar products. What happens next? These materials are taken to different processing plants where they are broken down and reprocessed into new things. Some materials are recycled into the same material. Some are made into entirely new products. Check this out. Remember how our natural resources, um, trees, sand, rocks, and oil must be processed to become a product? When each of these materials is recycled, it actually becomes like a new resource. So we don't have to use our natural resources. Instead, we can use recycled materials and make them into something new. I get it. Let's look at each of our friends, starting with page paper. Page doesn't belong in the trash. Notebook paper and other kinds of paper are easily recycled and turned into new paper. Look at all of this paper at the MRF. In the recycling process, paper is first sorted, then shredded and repulped to be re-rolled into new paper products. So how does this help our natural resources? Right, it means that we don't need to start with a tree as our source, we can start with recycled paper. How about Gabby glass? People have been recycling glass for over 3,000 years. Here's a pile of glass waiting to be recycled. The glass is sorted, then crushed and made into more glass. The process looks just like this. When we recycle glass, it saves energy and resources because we don't have to go through the first steps of making glass from sand. It's a lot easier to make new glass from old glass. Next, let's take Miguel metal out of the trash can. Wow, look at this big bale of metal at the MRF. Aluminum and other metals are sorted, then melted down and reformed into new metal products in a process that looks very much like this. Recycled aluminum cans can be made into more cans or toys and car parts. And there is no limit to the number of times that you can re, 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 recycle aluminum cans. Aluminum can be recycled over and over again without ever losing its quality. And then there's peat plastic. He also should have been recycled. Yes, just look at all this plastic that people have sent to the MRF. First, the plastic is sorted, then melted down and turned into flakes or pellets to be molded into new items. Liquid plastic can be poured into molds to make new plastic bottles or fun toys like the Frisbee Erica showed us earlier. The liquid can be cooled down and spun into fibers to make cloth used to make things like reusable grocery bags and even fleece jackets and carpeting. Wow! So, do you see that by recycling these things, we can actually save natural resources because instead of having to cut more trees or more sand or rocks or taking more oil out of the ground, we can get the same thing from something we've already used. Pretty cool, right? The great thing about recycling any of these items is that they're going to be made into something useful. And remember, when we recycle, there are big benefits. Why do we recycle? Well, recycling saves our natural resources. Recycling saves energy. Recycling reduces pollution. Recycling saves money. Wow, to encourage you to recycle more, we use the expression, do more blue. It's also the name of the city of Tucson's recycling program. The more we use our blue barrels to recycle what we already have, the less we have to take from the earth. Also, we want to make sure that you're recycling the right things so that your blue barrels aren't contaminated. Let's find out how you can do more blue every day and recycle it right here in Tucson. First, let's do a cheer for the City of Tucson Environmental Services for their great Do More Blue program. Let's make a big C for city with our arms. Great, and now a big T for Tucson. 
Good. And again, give me a C. And a T. Way to go, city of Tucson. That was so much fun. Hmm, I think we should play the Recycle cool game now. Recycle is a fun game in which everyone is a detective. What do detectives do? That's right, they investigate, observe clues, and find answers. Do you know another word for detective? Have you heard of the word sleuth? Well, today we are going to be blue sleuths to learn how we can do more blue and recycle it right. Let's do a little chant. I say do, you say more blue. Are you ready? Do, more blue. Do, more blue. Great chanting. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Just look at all the things that we can recycle here in Tucson. All kinds of paper, glass, metal, and plastic products, like our four friends. We really can do more blue every day and recycle it right here in Tucson. So we already know that we shouldn't have put our four friends in the trash earlier. First, I need to give my trash can to Erica so she can help me put our friends into her blue barrel where they belong. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Let's start with page paper. We already know page can be recycled. So let's toss her into the blue barrel. So long, Paige. In fact, half of school's waste is paper, so it's important to recycle. Remember, first use both sides of the paper before you recycle it. But Paige paper has a lot of relatives who can also be recycled. Your family might be getting a lot of deliveries lately. Can cardboard boxes be recycled? You bet, but first, could you reuse the cardboard box to send a package or to organize your stuff? Then, if you have to recycle it, just flatten it before you toss it into your blue barrel. How many of you like takeout pizza? Mm, me too. I really am hungry. Sarah, do you like pizza? I sure do, but if the cardboard box is greasy or cheesy, you can't recycle it. Sometimes just the bottom of the box is dirty and the top is clean. So I like to rip the box apart, toss the dirty part into the trash and recycle the clean part. But this one's clean, so the whole thing can go into the blue barrel. How many of you eat cereal for breakfast, or maybe you like to snack on cookies and crackers. Oh, I'm getting hungry again. Those kinds of boxes are made of paperboard, which can be recycled, but the plastic bag inside cannot be recycled. Go ahead and toss that paperboard in the blue barrel, Erica. And we can recycle magazines and catalogs, newspapers, and paper bags. But could you share the magazine with a friend or use the paper bag again? Of course, another great way to reuse first, then recycle. How about milk and juice cartons? They're actually made of paper. Be sure to empty and rinse them out first, but don't use a lot of water, please. When you put items in your blue barrel, they need to be empty, clean, and dry. Can you say empty, clean, and dry? Empty, clean, and dry. Great. Are there any types of paper not recyclable in Tucson, Sarah? Don't recycle paper towels, napkins, and tissues. Those types of paper are too dirty. Yuck, they belong in the trash. Now for Gabby Glass. She's recyclable. 
Bye bye, Gabby. In fact, all glass food and drink containers can be recycled as long as you empty and rinse them first. Remember, empty, clean, and dry. What about other kinds of glass, Sarah? Don't recycle any other kind of glass, like mirrors, windows, or dishes. Those have to go in the trash. Time for Miguel Metal. We know where he belongs, so into the blue barrel he goes. Adios, Miguel! We can recycle all aluminum cans, as well as steel and tin cans, like soup and bean cans. Again, they should be rinsed out as needed so that they are empty, clean, and dry when you put them in your blue barrel. Are there other products made of aluminum that can be recycled? Do you know, Sarah? There are. We can recycle aluminum pie tins. Oh, no more thoughts of food. Be sure the pie tin is clean before you recycle it. We can also recycle aerosol cans that contain something that you can eat or put on your body like shaving cream, spray sunscreen, and spray cooking oil. But the cans must be completely empty. Are there kinds of metal we can't recycle, Erica? Yes, we can't recycle scrap metal or foil line containers, like Pringles. Okay, just one friend is left, Pete Plastic. We know where he belongs, in the blue barrel. But think about our three R's for a minute. If you use a reusable water bottle instead of a disposable one, then you'll be reducing waste and reusing. Erica, what about other kinds of plastic? The kinds of plastic that are easiest to recycle are bottles and jugs. So like water and soda bottles, milk containers and juice containers, and laundry detergent are all things that should go in your blue barrel. And you can recycle lots of other kinds of plastic as well, like butter tubs, yogurt cups, and berry containers. But we don't want your leftover yogurt, soda, and milk contaminating all of the recyclables. Yuck! So remember, all of our recyclable containers need to be empty, clean, and dry. Say it one more time. Empty, clean, and dry. Wow, our four friends and a lot of their relatives are now in the blue barrel, ready to be recycled. And even though we said goodbye to our friends today, you'll be seeing them in new products again and again in the future. In fact, maybe we should rename Pete to be Repeat. If you're just joining in, I'm Sarah from City of Tucson Environmental Services. I'm here with my coworker, Erica, and we're presenting Too Good to Throw Away. Because you're not in school, we're joining you safely at home. We are so glad you're learning about recycling with us today. Unfortunately, there are some things that we can never recycle in our blue barrels. Let's join our recycled friends on a special adventure inside a recycling bin in a school cafeteria to see what they are. Oh no! Yippee! Hey guys, Miguel Metal is here. Hey Miguel! Hey, Pete Plastic! Sup, Page Paper? I'm just glad to be here where I belong in the recycling bin. It was scary. I almost got thrown in the trash. But the important thing is you've been recycled, and now we can all be made into new products. Yeah, I can be made into a Frisbee or fleece jacket. Whee! Flat. Hey, what? Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Banana Peel, and I'm excited to be here. Uh-oh. Where am I? You're in the recycling bin. And you don't belong here.
and you're contaminating us. And specifically, my head. Oh. Oh, look out. <laughs> Greetings, recycling buddies. I'm Pepe Plastic Bag. No, no, no. Plastic bags do not go in the recycling bin in Tucson. Watch out, we got another incoming. Whee! Hi everyone, I'm Stacy Styrofoam, and I'm honored to be among such respectable recyclables. Wait, wait, I've been trying to tell you, some of you guys don't belong here. Wow, that was so cool. So nice to see our recyclable friends come to life in the recycling bin where they belong. I didn't know they could talk, but I want to know more about those new friends who don't belong in the recycling bin. I wonder why they don't belong. Everyone, listen up! Stacy, Pepe, Bob, you three are contamination. <gasps> contamination? Yep, contamination. That means you are not recyclable and don't belong in the recycling bin. If our bin gets to the recycling center and we've got too much contamination, we'll all be rejected and sent to the landfill. And that would be a real shame because I'm paper that can be recycled into new paper. And I'm plastic that can be remade into new bottles and other plastic things. And I'm valuable metal that can be recycled practically forever to make new metal cans. That's why it's so important that you know what to throw in the recycling bin so that we can be recycled into new things. If the bin is contaminated, we'll all end up at the landfill. Oh, oh no. no! Now I understand. Things that are put in the recycling bin that don't belong are called contamination. Kids, can you say contamination? Good job. It's important not to contaminate your blue barrel or else everything in it will be sent to the landfill. But what will happen to Stacy Styrofoam? Let's find out. So, Stacy Styrofoam, while you may have a recycling symbol, you are not recyclable here in Tucson and should never be thrown in a recycling bin. So where should I go? Sorry, Stacy. Styrofoam should always be thrown in the trash in Tucson. Okay, if it's where I belong, then it's where I shall go. Stacy styrofoam is a cup, but what other kinds of items are made of styrofoam? Right, some kinds of egg cartons and takeout containers like these. Sorry, Stacy, we can't recycle any kind of styrofoam in the blue barrel. How many of you help with the food shopping? Great, try to choose cardboard egg cartons instead of styrofoam because you can recycle the cardboard carton when you're done with it, or save it for storing a special collection of things. If you have styrofoam packaging at home, you can try to reuse it or return it to a packaging store. Otherwise, it must go in the trash. Please keep Stacy out of the recycling bin. Well, now we need to find out what to do with Pepe plastic bag. Why you are looking at me? I'm plastic. Doesn't that mean I'm recyclable? You are my cousin because we're both made of plastic. However, plastic bags can never go into recycling bins in Tucson. Aw, oh, man. If you go to the recycling center, you can clog up and damage the expensive recycling machines. Oh, no. I don't want to do that. Don't worry. You can still be recycled but only in special plastic bag recycling bins found in most grocery stores. Yippee! I'll make sure to only go into bins that say recycled plastic bags. Sorry, Pepe. You can't go in the blue barrel because you'll damage the equipment at the MRF. Oh, oh, but wait, Erica, Erica, don't put Pepe in the trash. First, can you think about how to reuse Pepe? That's right. If you do have plastic bags at home, use them as trash bags in your bathroom or to pick up after your dog. Better yet, what if we brought in our own sturdy bags to the store instead? Like this one. When you go to the store, just remember to BYOB, bring your own bag. 
reusable bags are really great because we can use them over and over and they don't tear like plastic or paper bags. And if you choose bags made from recycled materials, we don't have to use raw natural resources to make them. So remember, never recycle plastic bags in your blue barrel. Does anyone know where you can take those plastic bags from home to be recycled? Yeah, there are stores in Tucson like Walmart, Target, Basha's, Fry's, Food City, and Safeway where you can take our plastic bags for recycling. They send the bags to a different MRF that can recycle the plastic for you. You can include all kinds of clean plastic bags. Grocery bags, produce bags, bread bags, cereal bags, newspaper bags, Ziploc bags, dry cleaning bags, even the plastic wrapped around toilet paper and paper towels. Well now, that leaves our friend Bob Banana Peel. How's it peeling, Bob? <clears throat> Bob Banana Peel? Let's be honest. You're a banana peel. You don't belong in a bin of mixed recyclables. You're a food scrap and belong in the trash or compost bin, where food scraps decompose and can be used as soil in a garden. Really? I can help too? I'd love to be composted and help plants grow. Yep, you can. Food can never go in your recycling bin. But you don't have to throw Bob in the trash, Erica. You can compost your fruit and vegetable scraps in yard trimmings. Does anyone compost at home or at school? Great, you put your scraps in a container outside and they decompose. By composting Bob and his food friends, you can help your garden and keep waste out of the landfill. Great idea. Well, I think it's time to finish up our adventure in the recycling bin. Well, as much as we've enjoyed chatting with all of you, it's time for us to be recycled. Okay, we understand. Plastic bags, styrofoam, and food scraps do not belong in recycling bins. Let's go. On three. One, One two, two, three. three. Bye-bye now. Bye. See you around. Well, now that we've got all that cleared up, and because we're not contaminated, we're ready to go get sorted at the recycling center and live on and on as new products. I'm going to be one of those cool recycled plastic jackets. And I'll become a book made with recycled paper. Great. That's awesome. Wow. That was an exciting adventure, and you really are great blue sleuths. It was so much fun playing the Recycle Cool game with you. Did you notice how so many more items are in the blue barrel than in the trash can? You've discovered that many things that we can recycle here in Tucson to do more blue and recycle it right. If you have any recycling questions, you should talk with your parents or a trusted adult and contact City of Tucson Environmental Services by phone or on our website or Facebook page. And get the Recycle Coach app. And remember, if in doubt, throw it out. You don't want there to be any contamination in your recycling bin. And you also don't want to endanger the health and safety of the recycling workers at the MRF. It's very important to do more blue and recycle it right. Let me hear it. Do! More blue! Do! More blue! Great job, everyone. By filling up the blue barrel instead of trash cans and landfills, we're reducing our impact on the planet, saving natural resources and saving money. And if we reduce and reuse first, we're doing even more to protect our planet. Your job is to tell your parents, brothers and sisters, and friends what you learned today and help organize a recycling center at home so you can do more blue every day and prevent contamination. That's right, you can be a blue sleuth every day. So remember, whenever you go to throw something away, rethink for a minute. Could I have reduced my use of this and used less? Is there a way I can reuse this? Is this recyclable? Because if you practice the three R's, you help to save the earth. 
Let's say those three R's out loud one more time together. Reduce, reuse, recycle. And here's one more R to remember. Responsibility. Each and every one of us can be responsible and help protect our planet. Remember, it's also important to be safe from germs. So don't forget to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds every time. And while you're at home, enjoy the Tucson sunshine and get outside for some walks and bike rides with your family. We had a lot of fun today, and we hope you did too. City of Tucson Environmental Services is proud to offer programs like this one to help educate kids about recycling and waste management in Tucson. This too good to throw away presentation is recorded so you can watch it again later and be sure to tell your friends about it so they can learn to do more blue every day. You can also find our recorded middle school program Talking Trash in Tucson online so keep watching. Don't forget to do more blue every day and recycle it right. Let's do our chant one more time. Do more blue do more blue bye 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 everyone do, do more, more blue, blue. recycle, recycle it right, right.